Hello viewers, welcome to Mesoology. In this video, we'll try to refresh our knowledge about the human heart. The human heart is a four-chambered organ, which is highly muscular. It's made up of cardiac muscles with epicardium, then myocardium, and most internally, the endocardium. The size of the human heart roughly equals to that of the adult's clenched fist, approximately 12 cm by 9 cm in dimension, and it is located in the center of the thoracic cavity between the two lungs, one on each side and above the diaphragm. Our heart is also a delicate organ that pumps blood throughout the body. So, it is protected by a covering called pericardium. It has a parietal and a visceral membranous covering containing the pericardial fluid to reduce friction during the heartbeat. Then a fibrous layer along with the membranes protect it from mechanical injury. The muscular layer of the heart, the myocardium, which is very well developed, lies between the epicardium and the endocardium. Now coming to the chambers in the heart. The internal cavity of the heart is divided into four chambers. Two upper chambers are called the atria. That is the left atrium and the light atrium. While the two lower chambers are called the ventricles. So a right ventricle and a left ventricle. Each chamber is separated from the other by a wall called septum. Between the two auricles, it is the interauricular septum, while between the two ventricles, it is an interventricular septum, and between an auricle and a ventricle, it is auriculoventricular septum. Now, can you justify that the musculature of all the four chambers should be equal or not? The answer is no because the atria are receiving chambers and they pump blood to the very next ventricles. So their musculature need not be very thick. While the ventricles are distributing chambers, they have to pump blood either to the lungs for oxygenation, which is not very far away, but it may also have to pump the blood to the farthest part of the body from the left ventricle. So, it needs enough power to do so. Therefore, the thickest musculature is present in the left ventricle, which is required to generate force of contraction needed for pumping the blood with enough power. The right atrium receives the poorly oxygenated blood via the systemic veins from all parts of the body. The superior vena cava brings it from the upper regions of the body above the heart, while the inferior vena cava pours blood that is brought from the lower regions of the body below the heart. This blood is poorly oxygenated or less oxygenated, often referred to as deoxygenated blood in several textbooks. Now, a question arises. How is the flow of blood maintained so steadily without any faults? The answer is valves. There are four highly important valves present in the heart. Two of them at the auricular ventricular aperture. Located at the aperture between the right auricle and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. It has three flaps which open and flow blood from the right auricle to the right ventricle. While between the left auricle and the left ventricle sits the left atrioventricular valve. It has two flaps it is also named as mitral valve or bicuspid valve. To regulate the flow out of the heart, there are semilunar or 
pocket-shaped valves. The, the pulmonary semilunar valve is located at the mouth of the pulmonary artery, which takes blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. From the left ventricle at the origin of the aorta, it has the aortic semilunar valve. This indeed takes the oxygenated blood out of the left ventricle. The valves of less importance are the eustachian valve, which is also known as the valve of the inferior vena cava, and a thebasian valve, which is a fold of the membrane in the right auricle at the orifice of the coronary sinus. Let's see how does the blood get richly oxygenated. It is the pulmonary circulation, the circulation that pertains to the lungs. This starts in the pulmonary artery arising from the right ventricle, which soon divides into two branches that enter the respective lungs. The pulmonary veins then collect the oxygenated blood from the lungs and carry it back to the left auricle of the heart. This is the circulation for the oxygenation. Then there is a need for the distribution of this oxygenated blood throughout the body and that happens through the systemic circulation. The systemic circulation pertains to the major circulation in the body. It starts with the aorta that arises from the left ventricle. The aorta arches back and continues behind as a dorsal aorta. The aorta sends arteries to various body parts and their tissues and from there the blood is collected by the veins and poured back into the right auricle of the heart. This is what it comes into two different circuits, a pulmonary circuit and a systemic circuit. Thus human blood circulation is called double circulation. Let's finally find out how are the heartbeats conducted? The sinoatrial node, which is present in the walls of the right auricle, starts the command of the heartbeat. This is located near the opening of the superior vena cava. There is another, the atrioventricular node, which is located near the interauricular septum close to the tricuspid valve. The impulses relate to the ventricles by the special conducting fibers called the bundle of his that begins from the avian and extends to the interventricular septum. Then these fibers run all along the walls of the ventricle via the Purkinje fibers. They form a so-called system to create and conduct the heartbeat impulse in every part of the heart. In case the sinoatrial node turns faulty, an artificial pacemaker may be fixed in the heart of the patient to carry the commands of the heartbeat. I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel if you still haven't done so. In case you have a query, do not forget to post it in the comment box. Thank you.